if you're going to appear in the upcoming AIA PGT exam, which is going to be conducted in few weeks slash months, I think, then you need to hear this because I'm going to tell you three things that will save you inside the exam hall and also how you should start attempting the questions in the AIA PGT exam. And we are starting right now. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Taha Khan. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I share with you clinic and exam related productivity tips and strategies. If this is your first time here, start now by subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss anything. This video is for every aspirant of AIA PGET. Every student who is gonna appear in this PG entrance exam. Doesn't matter if your preparation is average or if your preparation is top notch. But these little things can prevent you from negative markings and can increase your score considerably. And I know your time is very crucial now. So I will try to keep the video as compact as possible. The first thing that is going to save you is a good sleep. And no, I'm not talking about sleeping inside the exam hall. Rather, I am talking about sleeping outside the exam hall means the night before. And speaking of a good sleep, a big shout out to Brain.fm who are kindly sponsoring this video. If you haven't heard of them already, they actually create music and sounds to boost brain activity, increase your productivity, give you a relaxed and deep sleep, basically getting more things done efficiently. I have been using their app mostly while I work or while I sleep and have found it quite useful. You can get a few days free trial by clicking this link below and also get a 20% off their subscription by using this code. I'll put the link and the code in the description of this video. So coming back, the day before your exam is the most important day in your life because on this day, you need to revise everything. I'll say this again, everything. A lot of people believe and will tell you that one day before the exam, you should just relax and chill that you shouldn't be studying anything, but I don't recommend this. Anyways, so today you will revise everything that you have been studying the entire year. And there are a lot to revise because you need to revise your entire five and a half years of course, eight major subjects and four to five minor subjects. So you need to study the entire day. You will be studying from morning to evening, but not at night no late night studies. Today is not a day to do late night studies because you have to sleep early today. You don't want to go to the exam hall with a dull, exhausted and a sleepy brain. A sleep deprived brain has zero recalling power and zero concentration level. And I'm sure you don't want that. Inside the examination hall, your brain needs to be at its peak performance. It needs to be hyperactive. So whatever happens today, the world comes to an end, but you will sleep latest by 10 and not a minute beyond that. Whatever revisions you were able to do, close your book by 10 and go to bed. And if anything got left, wake up in the morning and revise and wake up early, sleep for eight hours and wake up around six ish in the morning and then revise the leftover portions and topics that you need to revise. Now coming to the next point, point number two, this you need to do inside the exam hall and to execute this you need to have a very sharp and active mind and if your mind is not active you will not be able to perform this and performing this task is very important it is so important that if you aren't able to execute it properly then take it from me you are already halfway out of the competition so what exactly you need to do is judge the question paper this will be your task i mean you have to understand the standard of question paper lying in front of you and you have to be correct. You cannot go wrong here. See, let's be realistic. What is your aim here? Your aim is to get a PG seat in a college of your choice, right? Your aim is not to get the highest marks or itna score karna hai ke jitna aaj se pehle kisi ne nahi kara hai, world record torna hai, no. This is not what we have prepared you for. Our aim is not to get anyone highest of the highest marks in the exam. Rather, our aim is to provide enough guidance to an average student that they are able to get an MD seat in a college of their choice and in the subject of their choice. That's all. And for this, you do not need to attempt 100% of the questions in the exam. You do not need to know the answer to each and every question. To crack this exam, you only need to know the answer to 75% of the questions. Means you can leave one fourth of the paper and still get an MD seat in the college of your choice. Check the scores of all the previous year stoppers 74, 75, that is their score. Now, hearing this, you must be feeling so relaxed that, ah, I only need to attempt 75% and 
and I can easily leave the remaining 25%. I got nothing to do with those 25%. But the trick is to decide which 25% questions to leave. And this is gonna be the most important decision inside the exam hall that you need to make. And don't think it's simple that whatever I could attempt, I attempted and whatever I couldn't, I left. And at the end, I counted and saw that I have attempted 75%. Great. My work is done. I have reserved a seat for myself in MD. Entire year, what I actually teach is what you should not study for the exam. Like at Pulse, I teach OBS. So whoever has ever attended my class or saw the recordings of the class, have I ever taught you something that you already didn't know from BHMS? You all are doctors. You have already studied OBS. You already know OBS even better than me. But yes, one thing I know better than you and that is what are the topics that isn't required to be studied for the exam. The topics from where you won't be asked any questions ever. And I am an expert at that. So leaving any 25 questions will not do. You will have to judge the paper. Just a while ago, I was talking about the standard of paper. So you will have to judge the standard of paper, whether the paper is average or easy or difficult. Because this standard will decide the cutoff marks. If the paper is of an average standard, like the previous few US papers, score around 75, 76, you will get admission in MD. If the paper is very easy, then you will have to score around 80 to 85. And if the paper is very difficult, then there is no need to take risk and try to score 75. Score around 65 will get you admission in MD. So judge the standard of paper accurately. And I'll give you a tiny tip. 5 to 10 minutes after the exam starts, Take a look at the faces of the students on the left and on the right of you. You will be able to see the standard of paper on their faces. Or one more thing you can do is if there is any close friend sitting nearby whom you can trust, then both of you can make some code word from before and then ask each other what is the standard of paper, whether it is easy or average or difficult and then decide how much you need to attempt. Now I will tell you how you should attempt, which is point number three. You need to take three waves of attempt, means you will be attempting the entire paper thrice. As soon as the exam starts, start answering the questions. Question one, question two, question three, until you reach the last question, means question number 120. In this first attempt, listen very carefully. In this first attempt, only answer the questions you know the answer to with 100% accuracy. Means only attempt those questions whose answers you have marked are correct. You are so sure of the answer that you can fight with anyone on that. And while you are attempting, bookmark all the doubtful questions. Means you will get questions in which you are able to eliminate two options easily. But there is confusion between two options. You are not sure which one is the correct answer, which one is the correct option. So bookmark all these questions for review later. Now when you have finished the first wave of attempt, count how much questions you have attempted. And then the second attempt will start. And in this second attempt, you are only reviewing the doubtful questions, the 50-50 doubtful questions. Mind it, don't even try to attempt the question in which you have doubts in three options. If you even try to attempt these questions, then better you start your preparation for next year. So in the second wave, you are attempting only those questions in which you have confusion between two options. And how many questions you will be attempting now will depend entirely how many questions you have attempted in the first wave. Because by now, you already know the standard of paper and you know how much you need to attempt for selection. So in the first wave, if you have attempted 70% of the questions, then you know that you have done a good job. No need to take much risks because in the second attempt, you are already taking a risk. There is only 50% chance that you will be correct. So give a lot of thought while attempting questions in the second wave or else you will end up with huge negative markings. And now the third attempt will start. And in the third attempt, you have to do nothing. Means there is no third attempt. If you are trying to answer any question in the third attempt, then take it from me, you will get it wrong. So these were the three things that I wanted to talk about in this video. Hope you got to learn important things related to your exam and I hope these tips will be useful to you. Let me know how you like the video, give it a thumbs up if you liked it, share it with your friends and I'll see you in the next.